Episode 143. Oh, dirty wine, dirty wine. She grind on my dick like a hundred times. From Shoes to Skyrim with Matthew and Hiram. This is episode three of From Shrooms to Skyrim with Matthew and Hiram. This episode, episode, episode is three? brought to you by Sandbar, 143. Coconut Grove, 3064 Grand <laughs> Avenue, back. Miami, Florida, 33133, Home of the Fish Taco, Happy Hour, Monday to Friday, 3 to 7, Taco Tuesdays, Tacos Half Off, Sandbar, Coconut Grove. This episode also brought to you by The Last Carrot at 3133 Grand Avenue, Miami, Florida, 33133. They're open Monday through Saturday, 10.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sundays from 11 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Family owned since 1975, your go-to place for fresh, wholesome eats, The Last Carrot. Giving voice to all intrusive thoughts, this is from Shrooms of Skyrim with Matthew and Hiram. The show neither about Shrooms nor about Skyrim. These are just the motherfucking parameters. Okay. It's just me and Sean. Uh, we're picking up immediately from last episode. <laughs> you know, like Mad Men style. Showing up to work the next day in the same motherfucking oh, clothes and shit. Don Draper. Smelling like fucking stripper pussy and... Maker's Bagels. Mark. <laughs> Bagels. Ma- maple syrup. No cream cheese. Fuck toasted, just the bread. Uh, we, we was having a good motherfucking conversation. Shit was running long as fuck. And uh, w- one thing I have discovered in uh, our two years of podcasting is that even if it feel good in the moment, nobody, myself included, want to listen to fucking two hour long episodes. For, yeah, for sure. And um, um, at the same time, though. <laughs> Oh, we're we're posting these on separate days. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good because it's like, oh, I just watched this hour fifteen. I can watch another hour fifteen right afterwards. Nah, that's not happening. I, I don't even think the camera got enough juice for another hour fifteen. But Probably like a solid. 30 I can't minutes. wait for it to cut off. Could be a running bit, but uh, yeah, man. Last episode we were really getting into. In the beginning, we were doing what we usually did, and it felt like we were kind of forcing. So to pick to pick back up from last episode, um, immediately I was I was talking about this year and what happened with changing uh, locations of the podcast and and some of what that entailed. <clears throat> and yeah, so me, I'm a big uh, procrastinator, and and somehow I I I put something off for a day. And somehow fucking six months goes by, truly. And uh, it's something I'm working on, but that happened with the podcast. Like, it was supposed to pick back up January, and somehow um, it went from being, like, uh, everyday, everyday facet of my life to just, like, uh, an afterthought and then when we did reconvene me you and Carlos uh, and you know I know I know you guys were especially uh, Carlos who this is a longer trip for him to come down here uh, were getting a little frustrated fr- yeah frustrated with me <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and I hope you know, like when when we're frustrated, it isn't because it's like we're looking at you, like we're frustrated with you. We're frustrated because, at least for me, I see so much potential in this shit, and it's like we're just wasting more time when we have everything we need to make an amazing podcast and to relate to people and have them relate to us because we've been through so much shit. Right there, that's all the content, and. I, cause I was uh, 
we would set up, okay, we're going to do this day. And I'd be like, no, next week, no, next week. And then <laughs> on the days, uh, like, you and Carlos would be here for, like, an hour. And it, it was stuff, like, I don't, when I show up for later stuff, I don't do it intentionally. I mean, I don't think most people that show up late for that stuff do things intentionally. But, you know, I was just fucking coming late. My sleep schedule, cause I worked the nightlife. And I was just, things were just clicking for me. And and then I get here and, you know, I, and, and, and you guys kind of picked up on it. And I didn't think you were. Like, I like first of all, like, you and Carlos um, have, you know, like we were talking about by ourselves earlier, like not recently. Um, but, and, and, and let me just say something about Carlos, which I said this before. Carlos is a fucking amazing guy. Yes. Uh, super smart, super talented, really big heart, really genuine guy. Yeah, he's one of those and dudes when he walks through the door, you just automatically laugh. I've known him, yeah, hilarious, freaking yeah. hilarious. I've known him for, I don't even know if, if I've known him a year. Maybe it's been a year. It's been a, okay, since I met him, and I met, the thing is, this podcast, I've met a lot of people for the first time because of the podcast. Yeah, it's opening up. Uh, yeah. And Hi- Hiram worked with Carlos like years ago. Yeah. Hiram brought Carlos on the podcast. He was fucking hilarious, and he was down to come back several times. So I only knew him from, like, doing three episodes of the podcast with him as a guest. And then Hiram was moving out of Miami because the rent is incredibly high. Yeah. And his family was getting bigger. And (coughs) I love you, Hiram. I miss you, bud, if you're listening. I love you, Brother Bear. And You're my big brother. Bear. At that time, you were busy uh, with with. I think that's when you were uh, like doing like full time. Like when you weren't working, you were doing like recording. You were uh, working as an engineer at the booth. Yeah. And Carlos, who I didn't know outside the podcast, never even hung out with him before. But he was just a, such a fucking genuine dude that I was able. To do a podcast with him, yeah, that's crazy. That that's it, like that's like whenever you and your best friend are hanging out, and then his friend comes along, and it, then eventually your other friends out of town for like a week, and this is when you're a kid, and you're like, uh, I mean, you want to you want to try this out? You know what I mean? You want to try this friendship out right here? Maybe we'll be buddies, and then you end up being best friends. And but like not not even that. Like we didn't. It's not like we met each other and started hanging out. Like, we were like, okay, we do a podcast together now. We've known each other for four months. Well, do you know what a podcast is, bro? It's a friend date. This ain't business. I love that. We're talking. A friend date. It's a friend date. No homo. Or full homo, whichever way. Don't cancel me. You know, (laughs) there's anal involved. (laughs) That's a friend date. <laughs> At the end, that that's a friend date. That's the third, preferably. Um, uh, like for anyone, uh, which I at this point is fucking. Cause I know there are people that have stopped listening because Hiram's not on a regular basis. Yeah, there were people that stopped listening, uh, when you weren't on on a regular basis. Really? Uh, yeah, for sure. One hundred percent. Oh, you mean like people that I know personally? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, nobody, li- nobody listens for me, so. Uh, That's definitely not true because you started the whole shit. And, like, remember Bake Man, Cake Man? I started this gangster shit. Come on, dawg. And it's the motherfucking thanks I get. (laughs) Love Ice Cube. Um, So there's few and far between people that have been listening to the podcast since uh, the Genesis. But, like. Since the Genesis. The Genesis. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Anyone that goes back, like, is I think it's around, like, episode 80. Or seventy nine or something, uh, it just might just be kind of like interesting to look. Like at one point, it's uh, like predominantly me and Hiram, and then the next episode, it's me and Carlos, and that's us like linking up together for like the first time by ourselves, like uh, without Hiram doing a podcast episode. That's and pressure. Then, and then like you can literally watch like me and Carlos get comfortable with each other. 
Because at first we didn't have guests for a little while. And it's like, uh. Dude, that's literally. So what you caught on camera and in audio is the beginning of your French. Like you'll you'll have that forever. (laughs) The beginning of y'all's friendship. That's fucking beautiful. That's pretty fucking awesome. Imagine like the first time me and you met. If we had all yeah, those encounters like me, me on you camera. and Hiram starting a podcast, like wasn't a crazy thing because we had all that uh, history. Yeah, we known each other for years and we had all kinds of fucking like rapport and shit with each other already. And like, we just it was so easy to have a conversation with each other and like really get into that real shit. Not just surface level small talk. And shit was going like really good with me and Carlos. Like we had we had Oh, so I started down that train of thought because um, when you start coming through the pod again and you met Carlos for the first time, because, like, I used to say, like, uh, it's funny because, like, Hiram's older, you're younger. You know, you just turned 25. Carlos is in his 30s. <laughs> um, Like, in a lot of ways to me, like, Carlos is, like, a portman, uh, portmanteau of you and Hiram. <laughs> like, oh, I see what you're saying. He kind of got that older stuff going on. That but he's kind of Hiram young, guy. Yeah, yeah. But he kind of got that young stuff going on too. And also he got like the music and shit. So yeah. he like, he like kind of like a Hiram and Sean mashup. So I was <laughs> like, I got no Hiram. I got no Sean. <laughs> this is fucking perfect. I got, got a little bit of both. A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Um, And, and so, and obviously, you know, so... You guys, I've seen you guys uh, fucking your sen- uh, have synergy that was fucking amazing. Like, when you guys are together, it's fucking Shartlos. Well, I also feel, he just feels like my big brother in a sense. So that's, that I kind of relate when it, Hiram is my, the older brother that you're scared of. Like, you don't want to be humiliated by him whatsoever. Because it's, it's, he gets loud. <laughs> His belly gets in your face, you know. Because you can't reach him because he's too tall. Those fucking pores. Those goddamn pores, bro. (laughs) But Carlos is like the right in the middle where like if we spar or if we get into it, I might whoop his ass or he might whoop my ass. so down to earth. I feel the thing is I feel so much guilt. I've never that I fucking have fucking... I feel so much guilt for bringing out negative emotions in him because <laughs> for making him fucking by my uh, lack of punctuality that he, I, I can tell. And he's so, Carlos is so fucking nice, but I can tell when he's been frustrated with me and I feel so bad. I feel so bad. Cause he's so fucking nice. He won't, he won't, he won't fucking say a negative thing, but I, I can tell like when I've like, upset him and i feel bad because he is such a fucking wonderful person yeah to fucking he is use his valuable time yeah Everyone's time is valuable to be here with me well but you know why he do- does that right because he sees a potential he's not just doing it just because he likes it's the cat that damn cat <laughs> he yo it, it's like you got a damn dog that cat pounding down the door like <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of scared to go out there. Me too, bro. (laughs) (laughs) It's not like a big cat out there. So, and I think it's the same with me, bro. There's been multiple times where, and honestly, I I never apologized for it, but in the beginning, whenever I left, I could have stayed here and and still done it and just like, (laughs) but. Can't help it. It takes it takes bravery. It takes two to tango. No, it takes oh. it takes bravery to sit in something that isn't doing. Yeah, it's like easy when shit is popping to go over there, but it's like to get shit popping is another story. Not only is it hard then, but it's just it's hard to see the actual outcome. Like it's hard to believe that there's that amazing outcome of getting all these streams and selling merchandise and having like a booth at comic-con and people like actually listen to us and love us for who we are as people because i don't see that in myself but i'm starting to like i've s- always seen that you do like, and that's what i mean bro like, i've like, never listened I've known you you've been like you first of all you're like a fucking prodigy 
<laughs> and you're fucking hilarious. Like I, I fuck with business Sean that's on shit right now, and like he worried about money and trying to get shit popping. But it's not only it's well, the way that I want to make that money is through relating with people. I feel like I could relate with a lot of people. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. Like when when I first started getting it before like it turned into the podcast when i was like you remember when i was doing the bake man cake man show yeah and that's when you were like uh like crazy shroom and molly popping at work shine like that La- ladies and gentlemen if you want to ruin your mind <laughs> take a 10 strip of acid i've got to and serve <laughs> tables <laughs> You will be traumatized for the rest of your life. Yo, I've got a video of you somewhere of you putting dish soap on on a sponge and eating it. (laughs) Cause you were so fucking high. You were like Cause in my mind I'm like, I'll survive. This won't have any negative effects later. (laughs) You 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 I don't remember that at all. And then you're like, watch this, and you blew bubbles out your mouth. (laughs) No, bro, I need to I literally don't remember even I, I would usually remember some things like that, but I don't remember that at all, bro. That's amazing. Like the bubble, it's like it's like I planned it for a magic trick. Where the fuck did that come from? Dude, I'd be surprised I surprise myself sometimes. Cause I hear it stories. Like, like you'd be like, Are you filming? Watch this. And you were like, you know what this soap need? Some motherfucking syrup. And you put the- <laughs> And I, I was like, I feel like maybe I should stop this, but I can't look away. <laughs> and then I read like a whole chapter or two of the Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, you just read it out loud. Like you were like, you were just, you were going off. You were just like, you were like, let me read to you from his book. <laughs> I feel like the world needed it. It's like, yo, that's crazy. Like imagine like, it's like, yo, let me do drugs so I can read this book. <laughs> hey that book was going crazy for you it like. was and also there's something about when you're intoxicated whether because that night i was really drunk and i took some molly but it was like molly water beforehand kids don't do drugs this is all educational you know like when i was listening to, when a uh, central c and he like i saw i saw crack cocaine and then I go to the school and I tell the kids that shit ain't cool. I'm so hypocritical. And I'm like, yo, he's snapping. But um, Cause it's true. It's like we do shit and it's like, don't do that. Bro, this is exactly what I'm going through. I found so many great creative aspects from drugs that whenever I got sober, and right now I'm not completely sober, I smoke weed. To be honest, and like that's that's gener- still in ge- enough in general, or right this second. Well, I'm I'm not high right now. I've been smoking Delta Eight, which fuck that shit. But what do you mean in general? No, because you were like, I'm not high right. I'm you were like, oh, it's like the whole no, fast cause, conversation. No, you said I'm not completely sober right now, so I was like, in general, or right this <laughs> second. Let them know which one it is. Like, well, no, so. For example, I I went three months without, and I used to drink every single day, and it was either me hiding my drinking, like say I'd wake up in the morning, I'd have two beers before I've spoken to anybody, brushed my teeth, had some gum, just so people don't catch on to it. And then- yeah, but, but that's the thing about, at that time, we was both working at, uh, you know, at a bar. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the thing, like, al- alcoholism- is it's no joke bro it, it's the it, like here's the thing if you if you work at uh office max <laughs> and you're fucking tweaking seven days a week you have an like, issue manager steve is gonna call you to the office oh for sure yeah but if you work in nightlife it's and fu- yeah it's fucking normal dude it's crazy though it's like if you don't like 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 my boy at work he be like he be like like motherfuckers try to get you to drink on a daily basis you know what i've realized that's another thing is the peer pressure in the restaurant industry is insane not only because everyone that you're around co-workers and all that they're gonna go out afterwards get a drink they might have a shot while they're there and then offer you a shot it's all the servers that come into your job from the next restaurant over that are drinking on their break and you're like oh yeah that Hell, seems like a good idea today it's about Damn. And like pun intended is an intoxicated environment. Yeah. Because you're always in the party. Yeah. And 
is like, yo, I want to fucking party too. Yeah. Everybody around me is fucking partying. Like anybody that works that job sober is insane. And I know one motherfucking girl that works at that bar sober. She insane? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fuck yeah, dude. Um, Imagine working at a bar sober, completely sober. Dealing with all those drunk, uh, the my issue, my main issue was uh, the anxiety I got from dealing with the insane drunkness. Because it wasn't just regular drunkness. It was insane. Like insanity. <laughs> insane. It wasn't fucking sand, dude. <laughs> it was insane. <laughs> <laughs> insane. Okay. Not in dirt. It was fucking insane. No, nah, man. It was it was a rough environment. Also, since I was so young, it looked so edgy to be a part of that clique. I'm I'm twenty eight. I've been in the nightlife. Uh I'm for about a decade. Eight years. Not quite a decade. I've been I've been there eight years, eight or nine. Eight, I've been I've been in the nightlife eight going on nine years. I'm 28, so I've I've been in this my entire 20s, as um, in one capacity or another, but predominantly as a bouncer. In various venues, you know, I've done a little yeah. bar- bartending, a little bit this, little you know, predominantly as a bouncer. I've been in the nightlife security. Di- yeah, different types of venues, upscale, downscale, dive bar, nightclub, house parties. I have, I've reached a point where I have pretty much a zero tolerance for drunk people and their bullshit. Like it takes, it takes a lot to surprise me. Yeah, because I have heard it all. Oh, I got a funny story before we get back <laughs> to what we were talking about, which I don't even remember what we was talking about, but it it was deep. It was in sand. <laughs> it was in sand. All right, so look, uh, the club the other night, right? Uh, I was keeping an eye Quick on Quick question, thing. is the camera angle on you? Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, remember the thing about the camera angles, because that's, that's where we were at. Just remember that. Camera angles. You got that? Okay. Because I'm going to forget. Okay. What, what I asked you to remember? Camera angles. All right. In sand. That's where we at. In, in sand. sand. In, in sand in the membrane. <laughs> in sand in the membrane. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's a table. They've been there all night. And I'm kind of keeping an eye on them because they're fucking drunk as fuck. Like white, white, white girl wasted, and this fucking white boys, white girls, a fucking white girl wasted. The worst. And a little bit of a nuisance, you know. They're drunk. I'm just keeping an eye on them. <clears throat> uh, I look over, and this dude is all up in the table, right up in the grill of two girls, right. And I see the dude whose table it is, tapping him on the shoulder, and the dude's not turning around, and. Shit looked like what it was. The dude was up in the section hollering at the girl. I said, let me go over here. I'm like, I checked with the dude. I'm like, hey, you good? He's like, yo, I don't know this guy. Get him out of here, whatever. I'm like, you know, that's what I thought it was. I'm like, bet I'm going to get him out. So I tapped the dude on the shoulder like, hey, you got to go. They want you out of the section. And, oh, this is something I hate, right? And So I tap him on the shoulder, right? That was the end of the contact, physical contact. And he turned around, yo, I'm finna go, but don't fucking touch me. Yo, first of all, I hate I hate when people are with that don't touch me shit, okay? Yeah. Cuz and okay, so I'm I'm big on civil rights and all that, but but <coughs> let me tell you, the shit is different in a in a club, in yeah. a bar. 9 times out of 10, people uh deserve what's coming to them with the yeah. with the stupid shit they do. And, but that's that's a we, that's a whole another conversation. It's like they walk in there and then they're automatically a child. Like be, being accosted um, at the bus stop by law enforcement is different than fucking wilding out at the club and then crying about it later. That's that we can get into that later. But it's like it's like, yo, like you can't be here or like you can't climb on that, whatever, you gotta move. And they don't move, it's like well, I'm gonna move. It's like, okay, time to go. And then they're like, don't touch me. Yo, I told you fucking four times yeah. move. Yeah. You're moving now. That we're moving. So, and this dude's talking about, like, don't touch me. Like, I'm not even touch you at the moment. He's like, I'm finna go. I'm finna. I hate when people tell me what they're going to do, okay? It's time to move. I'm telling you to move, yeah. Like, all you got to do is move. This is my job. I will move you and get more people to move you. It's like, I hate that I'm going to move. I'm going to move. It's like, bro, we want to be having a conversation if you would just move. Like, we, I don't need to hear about Alcohol, it. bro. So... And here's the thing: if he would have like moved, if he would have walked off, I wouldn't have gave it a second thought. I, you know, I really, I really, yeah, yeah. 
Because so much of that shit happens not, that you're kind of desensitized uh, uh, to not, it. I'm not emotionally, and I, we, we get into the ins and outs of, you know, what it takes and the, the temperament yeah. uh, to work it's nightlife. It's got to be crazy, bro. But I'm really not emotionally invested in things, you know? Like, if he wa- walked out, I want to give it a second thought. Um, But he's not moving. And at this point, I'm thinking about, and he keeps saying, like, don't touch me, bro. Don't touch me. I'm going to move. It's like, bro, like, I haven't even touched you yet. Like, you would know if I touch you. Yeah. And so he keeps telling me how he's been a move. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's exhausting dealing with these people. And you you remember the Drake Take Care album? <laughs> I love that album. It's I thought you were going to finally finish the story. This is this is important. <laughs> yes. It's I know that of, album. Is is one of is one of the albums that I can listen to front to back, no skips. Love that album. Okay. It's a vibe. You know, remember that song with the weekend? Take your nose off my keyboard. Yeah. <gasps> yeah, yeah. West Wing. <laughs> oh, that was last episode. Uh there's a room full of what you following me for? <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. that song? The Weeknd on Take Care, right? So the DJ happened to be playing that song, right? So this dude, now he he steps out the section, right? The song's playing. And he turns around and looks at me and sings along to the song, <laughs> What You Following Me For? And I'm like, oh, you got <laughs> jokes. <laughs> You're going to clown me? You think you're going to get the last I laugh? love this song! Spartan kick him. <laughs> There's a lot of things where it's like, I, you know, you go over in your mind, it's like, yo, is this worth it? Is this the course of action I should pursue? Oh, do I really want, you know, there was no hesitation on my part. I knew immediately, like, I'm throwing this motherfucker out right now. <laughs> <laughs> you think yeah. you're going to get the last laugh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I am. I fucking grabbed him up, and of course the first thing he said, "Don't fucking touch me, bro." I was leaving anyways. I'm like, no. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I didn't even fucking, I, was, I didn't even fucking say anything. I was fucking see. I, the thing is, like, I always, I always get people by their wrist, right? Yeah. And then you know, cause the club is a whole thing. You can't be fucking putting people in chokeholds and all kinds yeah, of yeah. like dangerous. No, it's serious. Legally liable. Be liable. Shit. Yeah. Uh. If you control the wrist, you control the arm. You know yep. what I'm saying? And so I fucking had him snatched up by the belt and the wrist. Fucking. And I took him out like the side door. And I fucking threw him out on the sidewalk as hard as I fucking could. <laughs> you gonna fucking sing the fucking week. The, it's like the way he said it, He it was timed so well <laughs> that I was like, like, I got to fucking deal with this shit. Like right now, this motherfucker clowning me. Yeah. I'm, but I'm gonna have the last laugh. You think you're funny, bitch? Yeah, yeah, bro. And you had a lot of patience up to that point. Yo, if he would have left, I wouldn't have fucking cared at all. Yeah. No, when I was 17, I got thrown out of a fucking club, like bad, like thrown, kind of like what you're saying. But I didn't do. Sh- I mean, I snuck in. It was like the way he turned around, and it was like the timing of the situation was impeccable, and because I like. It was like in a movie when the music moves from the background to the foreground. I didn't even like pay. I wasn't even paying attention to what was playing until he would turn around and said, "What you following me for?" <laughs> That's hilarious, though. I was like, "Am I?" Am I That's am what fucking- made him snap. <laughs> <laughs> I love this song. <laughs> no, but uh, bro. So when I was seventeen, it was actually my first tattoo that I got. It was a Ghostbusters tattoo. It's on my bicep. I was super drunk. I bought like a fifth of Henny from uh, ABC Liquor right behind the five guys on US1. They're like, yeah, you look 21. But uh, I don't know what club it was. It was on Miami Beach. I snuck into the back and I'm like, oh, fuck, I made it in. And I'm just walking through and shit. Left all my friends outside. With a fucking bottle of Henny and a ghost no, no, no. tattoo. No, but uh, actually a blunt. And I was literally smoking it like as I snuck in through the back. Because I saw the bouncer standing out front. Wait, you say you got handy from the ABCs? Yeah. Man, you was fucking ghetto fabulous. You Dog, had, I was, you I was a, living that life, bro. You had a fucking hand in a blunt. Bro, I was the only white boy at this Five Guys. Shit. I was feeling like I had some Shit, clout. you bro. was like a young Shannon Sharp. All you need is a goddamn do-rag and a black-a-mile. Yeah, and I had my arm wrapped with the tattoo and everything. But 
I walk and I'm had a, had 17, a just rat, walk into rat, rat with a bandana. Actually, I shouldn't shout out the tattoo artist or the tattoo shop because I was 17. Allegedly. Yeah, but whatever. Um, I walk into the back of this club and I'm walking through it as I'm smoking this blunt and I just couldn't believe that I made it. Next thing I know, I'm literally picked up by like my fucking underarms like a baby. Yeah, you thought Picked you, up. you snuck in. Motherfuckers be watching. They be peeping shit. Bro, and I was, I remember feeling like a like a doe or a gazelle when it got caught by a lion. I was just frozen. Like, I didn't know someone could be this strong. Because he just, like, <laughs> easily put me all the way up in the air. And I was high up. I'm like, I've never <laughs> seen the world like this. But the next thing I know, the doors open and he throws me. Like, full on throws I, me. I think that's what girls be talking about when they be like, yo, I love when a man's so strong and can pick me I up. Felt I felt I like. I way it make me feel. I definitely felt like a bitch, bro. You got a little wet? But yo, when he threw me, I remember the first thing that hit the ground was my <laughs> face. And then the blunts, the blunts on the floor, I'm going to pick it up and he just steps on it. <gasps> I know that move. That's disrespect. No, and I was just like, got, I was so a, scared. You ain't Bro, even doing I was so fucking scared because I saw that this bouncer was ready to like kill me. It wasn't even on some, See, like, my actions equate what he did. Like, it felt like he wanted to kill me. Like, some, So I remember backing up like, yo, this guy's actually going to fucking hurt me. So let me just... It, My bad, bro. <laughs> it's, like, it's like it's like some things like that, like me without knowing any other context of the situation, like that that seems over excessive. Crazy. I, I bro, if he literally told me, Hey, I saw you leave right now, or I'm fucking you up, I would have been like, I'm like, gone. Like I do know I'm at the gone. same time, like sometimes it's like, okay, like You probably had a hard day. If someone like sneaks into the premises, it's like it could be it's like green light on that person, like, oh, yeah. they snuck in, like we gonna take them out the hard way. It it, it I it, fucking learned the hard way, bro. <laughs> but it's like I'm glad like he didn't do anything since so you passed that point. Once he threw you out, kind of rough. Yo, I've never had my face slammed on concrete from like a height like that before. I was fucked up. I literally for, for, stood up like for me. Like it knocked for me, me out. Personally, I've always been one to like match the energy, uh, like. Oh, oh! You want to take it up here? Yeah, yeah. I could take it up here too. Watch this, but I never, I never start from down here, and 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 t- and take it up here, and and especially with the depending on the venue you at, the, like there's a lot of finesse involved and a, a lot of self awareness you gotta have with what you can do with where you at and who you're gonna do it to and why you're doing it, and what the situation is. There's a lot of variables. Uh, I know for me. Personally, like when I was when like starting out like at Sandbar and stuff, and and this is me, you know, I didn't have the little bit I got going on. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of <clears throat> I'm kind of like baby face. I got a full head of hair, wavy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and I had the height. I wasn't quite the size I am right now. So I'm like, you know, white boy, skinny white boy with glasses. So as a bouncer, I got tried a lot. Yeah. And a lot of people had to learn the hard way that I was the wrong one. Yeah. And you know, like you, you should have, you should have, you should have picked uh, that guy. You would have got off easier. Yeah. Because they just, um, all right, we getting, we getting way off topic. I could go. No, on. we're not. We're not. We're not. Not. I, I got, I got so much stuff in that department. Well, that's what they're. Oh, fuck. What, what happened? Funny bone. Yeah. I uh. I remember one episode a long time ago. I started. I tried to get you to talk about your um, bouncer stories, and you just didn't want to because I think it was a little overwhelming. Maybe you weren't ready to well, delve not, into that. Not that a few years ago, I had a lot to say about it. At some point, everything kind of blurred together for me, and I I just kind of were at some point there was like some sort of sense of like wonder and awe and like. And but now I've seen so many things, so many times. It's just kind of, like even when I even mean, when I start, even when I start that. working out the big clubs, like like I used to get. I don't. I for certain people I get starstruck, but I was seeing like I seen so many celebrities so many times. Like I, at this point, I fucking lost track. Like how many different celebrities I used to like. I, I used to be able to, like, run down the list, like, yo, I'm at this person, I'm at this person, I'm at this person. But I was, like, over fucking 100 people. Like, I don't even keep track no more. Like, obviously, like, there's 
people are, are more emotionally invested than others where it's like, oh, my God, this person. But it's like so many people at this point. It's just like so many things. It's just like there's so much intake. Um, Like I'm like fucking like I go out there and I'm fucking bombarded. My senses are bombarded. The lights, the girls, the music shaking my bones. I'm looking at so many things. Like I'm from my senses are bombarded. Yeah. And do you remember what I asked you to remember? Camera angles. And sand. And the man brand. So when we, uh, cause yeah, I could talk forever about that. There's so many different facets to that, the ins and outs. Um, so when we started back up a few months ago, um, and you guys picked up on this, I didn't realize you were, I was like, it's a smaller room. Uh, I'm not going to have a camera on me. I'm going to be behind the computer, yeah. you know, From shrooms doing, to doing my thing, uh, mashing buttons and, uh, digging up information. And I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to have fucking short loafs on front street, uh, you know, making fucking beautiful music and shit metaphorically and literally. And you guys gave me a lot more pushback than I was anticipating. Yeah, because it just ruins we started, continuity. We, we started with three cameras. Yeah. And I even went ahead and fucking sold one of the cameras. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, like, we're talking about money, like, earlier. The Out of everything we went in on the podcast, the, like, the cameras single, the cameras single-handedly by themselves were, like, the most expensive thing. Like anyone, yeah, they're like eighteen hundred each, right? Anyone who does photography as a hobby <laughs> is like, like they they gotta be. Well, I, I mean, iPhones, the camera. It, I mean, bro, look. anyone you see doing photography and they got like an actual camera. <laughs> oh, it's crazy! Like they're financially invested in their shit because camera yeah. equipment is not fucking cheap. Okay, like but tripods. Like, How much are these tripods? One hundred eighty dollars. Tripods, Italian. And I feel like I could build that if I wanted to. No. It would look horrible. Um, but I could do it. And because also this is a smaller room than the studio and than my apartment living room. So it would be get real clutter with three tripods in here. And I was like, boom, the couch kind of spread out, you know, camera for Sean, camera for Carlos. It's a wrap. I don't need to be on camera. And you guys gave me a, a crazy amount of pushback on that, which I was not expecting <laughs> at all. And that kind of stemmed from like I was I was kind of I was trying to like uh I was trying to uh put myself in like a more subversive role. Like kinda, I was like backgrounding myself. I don't even think I realized it at the time. It was scary. It was. To me, that felt like when the podcast was actually dying. Like, it was it was slowly dying, and then when you were like, I don't want to be on camera anymore, <coughs> it felt like, oh, fuck, I guess we're just really giving up on this idea. Like, I don't know when I realized it, but this has been a really hard year for me. I know, bro. And, um... And yeah, it's like it's like you told me like you got some you got some like not so good feedback about the the latest episodes. And lately we've been getting together and we haven't been able to get no real momentum going. She hasn't been clicking. Yeah. The way I thought it was and I was thinking to myself, I was listening to like you were uh going off earlier about how like when I be going off this, that, and the third direction, you obviously sound like crazy to listen to. And I, I heard that, like, in the last episode, I was like, I like I don't even want lis- to listen to myself. I sound fucking, I was like, yo, I've been doing this two years. Like, when did I get so fucking bad at this shit? You and, know? like, if for whatever reason, shit has been clicking. Like, it was like. You it think was, it's just confidence? You think it just all stems from confidence at the moment? It's not a confidence thing. It's like, well, like, we kind of came in here and it's like, for me, it was like, okay, I got, I got Sean and Carlos, who are both fucking uh, super funny, super talented, and I just kind of like assumed uh, we gonna get shit popping, and then but now I'm kind of seeing like shit, you know, 
I can't just sit you back. You can't just rely and let shit get popping. I, you know, I gotta, I gotta fucking, I gotta fucking bring it. I gotta fucking be present. And I'm so, so glad. that's I'm so glad you're aware of that though. That's yeah, great. So like, I was kind of getting bummed out, uh, like when I was when I was listening back to these past few episodes, I was like, yo, like, why isn't shit isn't hidden like it should be fucking hidden? Because we weren't being real with everybody, like ourselves. I feel like I, for the past two to three times that we've tried to record, have been like, let's have, like, in a sense being like, come back to me. And I've been like trying to be like, come on, we're here now. What and it's not even of like we need to discuss something. It's more of a I just want to be real on camera and have recordings of me that someone that I know or someone that I don't know can listen to and be like, oh my or god, fuck yeah, man. Someone, that took bravery to discuss that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like our like Father's Day episode really resonated with people. Type yeah. Shit. And, and I wish I could have delved more into my topic instead of just crying because I was so fucking drunk. Well, we we can run it back. We could. Because I can talk it more from like a logical standpoint now. And you know what I've been realizing lately <laughs> is that uh, like the past, like the past several episodes have been really superfluous in the sense that you know, like when they've had like super groups that like shit sh- looks good on paper, yeah. But for whatever reason, it doesn't work in real life. You just, there's nothing that you remember from it or like relate to or connect with. You know, for whatever reason, there's like an intangible element that is missing from the equation sometimes, and we haven't really been bringing. Uh, like lately, the podcast really hasn't hasn't had no heart. Like, yeah, I, like I thought I was doing enough to maintain but you know shit's been down here and this world's been maintaining you gotta do extra to get it back up to this level to maintain at that level yeah and i've been doing like you know before i could maintain and we're already like operating at this level but i've I've been doing the same like i i put i put topics in my notes and then i don't research them beforehand Mm. and i've been thinking that's enough and then i know i should know better that i'm fucking terrible with names uh in real life and just like like i, I like earlier i couldn't i couldn't remember uh selling a murphy name when we we're talking about Oppenheimer. yeah the last episode and and everything know, should be like written down just in case that happens like, you know what like i mean i'll be ha- like like in my notes like i you know i i just had Oppenheimer. <laughs> 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 and then I'm just, and then this is what you do you're like so uh Oppenheimer it's uh like uh what's that guy uh, um, Nolan Nolan <laughs> Nolan uh what movies he got he got uh he got Tenet uh yeah you know what I'm saying like I should know better I'm the wrong person to go off the top I should never go off the top I should go off the bottom but also, thought, we also, you need to. I it, thought that bar was gonna hit harder, but it really, <laughs> it really didn't make sense. I haven't. I think I have an issue, and I can relate to that as well. But the whole thing is to really, like, for example, this podcast when we first sat down for the first episode we just did, I was nervous. I'm sitting here thinking of like what direction I'm gonna go in, and I put so much anticipation on the start that I'm just sitting here like, "Fuck, what's gonna happen?" And then I say something that I'm not really putting my heart into, and. That's why I think when I'm when I'm drunk, right? I can put my heart into things because that barrier is gone. That anxious barrier is completely gone. So that's why a lot of people loved me when I had a good like a normal buzz because I could just things flowed perfectly. And I got used to that. I'm just going to start roofing you <laughs> before we do anything. <laughs> No, but I'm really, I'm finding that balance of like being able to be funny when I'm not. I don't want Bruce Banner. Up. I need the Hulk. No, bro. <laughs> Dude, I've, I've woken up. I need sexual chocolate. I need Mark Henry. Imagine this though. Have you ever woken up extremely hungover and remembered every mistake you made the night before? And some of them are very heavy. 
Uh, not really, but I know what you're talking about. I basically had that every single fucking morning for years. Like, no one really knew how bad it got because I kept it a secret, but I also showed how drunk I was most of the time. And I'm not trying to sit here and preach like, don't drink. Have a healthy relationship with alcohol. If you go on vacation, have a fucking Corona. Who cares? Or get some cocktails. But you got to really know which vice that you have is going to... Uh, that shit could have killed me, bro. There's multiple multiple moments where I could have been in really bad situations because I drank. Yo, I, I remember times when you was like blackout drunk at Sandbar. And you were like take off into the night on a fucking scooter. <laughs> <laughs> well, like 30 miles per hour. Hitting speed bumps just like, boom! Yeah. It'll be like... And know, it had a Bluetooth speaker on that bitch. I'd be bumping little Dirk and shit. Oh, like I hope I hope that guy comes back. Like he really, he he kind of he kind of peeled out of here. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Not really safe. Nah, man. It really, bro. It finally. There's something about, and I think it also it's due to how self aware my girlfriend is, and she helped me kind of be like, hey, you're falling into the same cycle that you always fall into, and you're lying to yourself thinking that you're doing better. That takes balls. Because most people just break up with you or even make things seem worse than it is just to get you the fuck out of the situation and you learn for yourself. It takes a real friend, like a true, someone that loves you unconditionally to be like, hey, this might work, this might not work, but you're being an asshole. Stop fucking up. Like, you fucked up enough. You can. You have the self-awareness and ability to take the right steps, but you make the wrong decisions every day. And this is, she didn't literally say this for word, but that's like everything I've gotten from the lessons of heartbreak. Bro, the best music, the best writing every best journal writing like everything i've ever done that i consider the best of when it comes to my music and my art been from heartbreak yes and i had to realize that i'm writing for the wrong person i'm not writing to heal myself and to be transparent <laughs> 1 800 starving artist call now to Subscribe to Starving Artists. It's the magazine that's all for starving artists. Our, about 20% of the funds that we get go to the artists. The other 20 or the other 80% goes to big corporations like Disney, Apple, etc. Um, damn, bro. That's a good, another good episode. I like this, Matt. I like this a lot. Yeah, you know, th th this podcast is something that I want to uh, succeed. And, and so, yeah, it's, it's kind of it's like you saying before, we got to uh, we got to be real with it. And um, we got to bring something to the table um, in order for people to eat off the table. Yeah. Just trying to do something there. No, but that makes sense. Um, it's like when people listen to a podcast, oh, you know, I saw a meme the other day that was like, I, <laughs> I used to talk shit about school. Like what the fuck they got me in this class learning about shit. I'm gonna never use again. And it's <laughs> like me now, uh, oh, new episode, new hour long episode of the dolphin podcast. <laughs> I got to listen to it. It is kind of crazy how podcasts have taken over like society. There's so many podcasts now. I mean, that is, uh, you know, stuff like that kind of works in tandem with the level of accessibility to technology. You know, yeah. first you saw it like with home studios, yeah, and music, and then, you know, uh, with YouTube and everything. You know, TV's been moving from like broadcast to streaming. Yeah, it internet. turned from radio shows to podcasts, and now it's like. Before, it's like you had to go over here in order to do this, you know, have a show. You had to be over here at the radio station, at the TV network. Yeah. But now it's Funded like. Funded by the label and all that. Anyone has the capability 
So now it's like the business has model has to, you know, uh, be reverse engineered to cater now to what the reality of the situation is. And so we're still kind of in the midst of that because in the scheme of things, podcasting, which now has been going for what, like a decade maybe? I would say like strong. Yeah, yeah, because it's almost well, we're 2014, 2016. In the scheme of things, this is still pretty fucking preliminary. Yeah. Like, for example, uh, YouTube just added the ability to add your uh podcast to youtube like they didn't have that option before with the rss feeds and whatnot like shit is still in flux at this moment very much so and it's one of but it's one of those things that every day it's becoming more and more saturated just like music and like the whole soundcloud era people are still chasing the soundcloud era style which can never be replicate it again without sounding like a copycat that was a very generational thing like that was what was happening at that moment and then that's now it's done now it's done we no longer want to sit here and just be extremely fucked up and sing about depressing shit all the time there's times to like evolve that's why you see a lot of music now that isn't just zans death suicide shit like that like people, for example, the pandemic, I feel like made everyone really realize, oh, we're in control. It's time to, or we're out of, we're not in control. You know, we're living in a society. <laughs> Bro, the pandemic was fucked. Fever. That shit was bullshit, bro. Fever dream. Yeah. Like really think about it when you go back to it, it, it freaks me out. Crazy times. Yeah, bro. I remember thinking it was going to be fun. Like the day that I was watching the news and it said, we're having a lockdown for a month. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, bro. It's like a giant sleepover. I'm going to just get drunk as shit and fucking play video games and bench, bro. I'm going to just hit the bench every day. Didn't hit the bench. Got drunk every day. <laughs> Tiger King came out and I was obsessed. Yo, Tiger King. That was, those are Bro, that was an times. era. That shit saved us. That shit captured the attention <laughs> of the nation. <laughs> Yo, they that was a perfect timing to release something too. That was that fucking good. They killed it. But, bro, a month turned into three, turned into six, turned into over a year, right? Yo, didn't they find that lady's husband and he's, like, alive in South America? Yeah. Yeah, so that bitch Carol Baskin didn't kill him. Carol Baskin. Goddamn Tiger King. Man. She looks crazy, though, for sure. Uh, all those people are crazy. I remember you working at Boston Market, bro. Not to throw you some shade. <laughs> Oh. He was like, yo, come work with me at Boston Market, oh, man. Yeah, the, the Boston Market right next to your building. I was like, man, I need a little extra money. I need something to do. I was, like, I, I was in the drive through one day. I, I was at the drive through at Boston Market, and I, I wanted to order one of those sandwiches they got. And I was like, uh, can I get a sandwich? And they're like, nah, we don't have nobody to make them. I'm like, like <laughs> what, what do you mean? They're like, you know, we don't got enough people to work. I'm like, I'll come work. What, they need a specific sandwich guy to make the sandwich? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a whole station, man. Oh, that's crazy. And, um, yeah, because at that point, like, I there was nothing open <laughs> for, like, the pa- you know, working, for me, the pandemic was a crazy time. Like, I haven't really talked about it. But, like, I was doing, like, officially, like, there was one point that officially nothing was open. Yeah. But I was fucking working like house parties and like warehouse parties that they were <clears throat> in like fucking the middle of little Haiti. Yeah, and that's like sketchy because and, they literally have cops like trying to shut down all that shit. And like first of all, the neighborhood was sketchy, and they were like, it was, it was, it was like a barbed wire fence on wheels, right? <laughs> and I was fucking man in the fence. And Dude, I saw a fucking seafood cafe the other day that looked like a prison. And I'm like, why the fuck would anybody go in there? And it was in Little Haiti. It's literally a blue building that's like blocked like and, pillars um, with you know, barbed wire. I, I was like near like 79th Street or something. And there's like a chain, a big chain on the fence, right? And they were like, yo, if a cop pulls up, 
put the padlock and lock the fence and go inside and lock the door. Don't let nobody come out until the cops leave. And I was like, okay. <laughs> They're just pulling up. You're just like, they, ching. They were like, they were like, there can't be nothing here. Uh, it got to make it look like there's nothing to be shut down. You know what I'm saying? And so it was like, it's like basically like trap everyone in the warehouse. They were like, no one can leave until the cop, until the cops leave. Cause they can't know there's a party going on in here. They can't like witness. It was, it was, it was so much. It like, there was how, anyways. <laughs> yeah. So I worked at Boston Market for like two weeks. <laughs> and here's the thing that I, I couldn't. Mentally, I kind of do it. Physically, it was easy. No, but it's the people there. The people there. There's two types of people in fast food that, as far as I could ascertain, right? I know exactly what you're talking about. Very young people. Yeah. Beginning their professional career where, like, from, you know, having an allowance or making no money to making, like, $11 an hour. It's like, oh, I'm I'm making money. I'm rich. Rich, To the kid, you're rich. Yeah, yeah. And then old people that have and given up. And there's old people at the end of their professional career. And they just hate their life. Yeah. Type shit. Yeah. So it was, I, I, I just didn't, like, there was no one there to talk to that was, like, on, on my level. Uh. And the shit got to me where, like, I'm fucking, like, uh, stringing up rotisserie chickens. And, you know, after chicken, after chicken, after chicken. And, like, an hour would go by, and I would be, like, it might have been, like, 14 or 13 or something. Let's just say yeah, th- 13. Yeah. I just I made know. 14 bucks. And as, like, an hour would go by, I was, like, that's $13. <laughs> and I just I just couldn't do it. I was, no, like. No, I feel you. This is this is uh, bullshit. Let me go get a PPP loan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah, yo, so much, nah, so much crazy shit from the pandemic. I know, bro. PPP. Yo, but, but yeah, that, I knew. Okay, I'm not gonna say his name, but I knew a guy that made millions of dollars off PPP loans and all that fake bullshit, and yeah. it it blew my mind. And you know him as well. We'll talk about it. I afterwards. don't know. I don't know shit. No, you know him. I don't know. Sh- I, I don't know what. I don't know what. The and fuck, this motherfucker. I don't know what the fuck Sean talking about. I don't know shit. Craziest shit I've ever heard, and I, this it baffles my mind how. I don't know. He any, isn't in prison. I don't know anybody that made millions. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Yeah, oh, you do. Oh, I, no, I don't know. Uh, but he got caught with an airport in the airport with a case of Molly, like four hundred pills, in a gun case. I don't know this person. <laughs> don't fucking put me in whatever the fuck you're talking. I'm not about. just saying. I'm just saying this is one of the regulars at the bar that we used to work at. No, he isn't, but you'll never find out who he is. He's an enigma. But that motherfucker scammed the system, and it blew my mind because I'm sitting here like, I can't even get my fucking unemployment, bro. I can't even get $600 a Yo, week. Yo, I was never able to get my motherfucking unemployment. Me neither. Meanwhile, the fucking mayor and the fucking city council, they're doing all this fucking corrupt shit. Yeah, there was no help, bro. Yo, the world is fucked, man. That's why the shit you was talking about earlier or last episode, whatever, about the AI and about how it's being programmed with like these uh like selfishly yeah. instead of like impartially. Yeah. It's worrisome because, you know, humans be doing fucked up shit. And See, so I told if, you it was if scary. The, if the AI is acting, you know, is Imagine an AI with the greed of a human. Or even worse, they're so sick of the greed. They're so sick of seeing it in humans that they're like, okay, we're done. Yeah, I was just watching The Matrix the other day, man. That shit gets more and more. I mean, I don't think it's literally going to be like us as pods. I think they would just wipe us out. And then just like leave Earth. And just explore the cosmos. I'm I'm ready for like the altered carbon cyberpunk type shit bro we're broke now imagine in that fucking realm we'd be underground we'd be underground (laughs) digging coal all day for no reason the robots don't even need the coal they're just like (laughs) dig you're worthless but i'll fucking dig it with my motherfucking cybernetic arm and then we come home and we sit down and like our our homes are just like rock cells 
but we still have a podcast, but it's like an imaginary podcast. It's in the with like a broomstick it's attached a, to the it's wall. It's in the metaverse. It's a metapod like the Pokemon. Bro. Yeah, bro. I want to relate to you motherfuckers, bro. I'm just like you. Unless you're part of this like cancel culture bullshit. Oh my god, young man. Kill yourself! Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> I want to relate Come to you, but kill yourself. Kidding. I don't even know. Let's that. talk about suicide, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, think about suicide. It's a little fucking out there. You know what I mean? Takes a little bit of balls to do it. You know? Is it kind of fucked up that like when it? <laughs> I don't know if I can say this. Yo, it's crazy. Like you know, how, like Robin Williams killed himself. Yeah. And it's like you always hear that, and it's like. Yo, like this guy, like he got it all going for him. Like, how could you throw that away? Well, he had like a, a disease that was slowly degenerative, right? I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that. and he the, once he got like the full diagnosis, or, or like uh, Anthony Bourdain, right? Well, there's the Dave Chappelle joke about it, which is amazing. But um, it's like <clears throat> when you look, when you you, all, I I feel like you always look at people that uh, are successful when they kill themselves. Uh, you look at him with disdain? Except, except for, no, except for never. <laughs> except for Jeffrey Epstein, because he didn't kill himself. Motherfucker. Um, uh, oh, you know what? <laughs> but it's like, it's like, these people, like, they were successful. Like, why would they do that? I be understanding, I be relating more and more. I mean, like, how could you feel like that even if uh, it's, it seems like things are going so well on the outside? I feel like whenever you get to that goal, right? Say our goal right now for each of us is $100,000 each in our bank account, right? You get to that goal. Man, I just want to be happy. You, But you get, but let's say one of your main goals in life is to have financial bliss, be so comfortable that you don't have to work for anybody else, right? Which we both have to. When you hit that goal, there's going to be another one because that won't be enough, naturally. And I think that's how it is for certain people. Now, for me, if I were to hit $100,000, yeah, I would invest in that, but I'm not going to work every day so that I could waste time being miserable. You know what I thought about when I was younger? I'd be like, man, how could there be world peace? Because then there'd be, if there's no struggle, there's nothing to define us anymore. Yeah, yeah. yin and yang. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you kind of need that shit, yeah, for sure. If there wasn't, like, if if we didn't have the struggle that we're having now, I, I genuinely can't imagine how it's going to feel when I have enough funds. And, I, you know, I've been talking about money a lot, bro, but... To be real with you, that's my main cause of stress. And I've always been like, oh, I'm not going to be someone that chases money. That's that's stupid. That's selling your soul. It's like, no, in order to have a legacy right now and to fund the things that I want to do, I need to get it. I need to chase that bag. And um, I can't fucking imagine what it's going to feel like to have money to for emergency funds or to go on a trip. Yo, I be going in order to fucking eat. I've yeah. been going to Publix and getting a few things, and it's $183, Bro, and I'm like, how? Literally just told Jacob that today. I can't go grocery shopping without spending 120 180 so I've been eating Chipotle twice a day, the cheapest thing, chicken burrito, white rice, black beans, salsa. No sour cream, no queso, no guac, because it's like $2 extra for that shit now, and that's crazy. Chipotle hyped up ain't what it used to be. Yeah, but that eight dollar chicken burrito with all that shit hits. So sixteen bucks a day, I can eat two fat ass burritos. So that's like the plan from now on. And I want a grocery shop. I love cooking. Damn, what is Chipotle about to close? <laughs> Damn, I kind I kind of want Chipotle now. Yeah, it's too late. It's almost ten. I think they close at 11. I'm going to look it up. (laughs) 
Uh, well, guys. Oh, no. They, they closed already. Oh. My closed early 4th of July. What what time are we at? Shit, we over an hour. See, that's what I'm talking about, bro. I missed that feeling. Cameras ain't fucking dying either. I miss the feeling of, like, talking and then we fucking... The time just goes by like that because we've been on it. Yo, in the beginning, we used to do fucking, like, two and a half hour It was crazy. Episodes. And it did. It felt like an and hour. Marvel would be like, how, bro? How y'all, how y'all do so long episodes? And that's that, that felt good coming from him because he, he knows his shit. Shout out Marvel, bro. I fucking miss your tall ass. You big as hell, boy. Yo, that monkey thick. <laughs> monkey Yo, thick as hell. Just just to put some context on that, there was a there was a monkey joke about the human chimp hybrid. He's not saying that Marvel's a thick monkey. Oh my god! <laughs> that's that's not what I'm trying to say, bro. This the there's the joke that we had. It was an inside joke, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbit fire. I gotta reload. <laughs> hey, don't let your girl watch this podcast. I do three fingers. Oh shit. Both fingers. Sweating, bro. Hold a finger. Skyrim Fucking back, bitch. Yo, you sent me this song like four years ago, and I was like, yo, this gotta be the outro track. It's like I could I could see the credits going over this. No, for sure, and it's empty. It's like the camera out the window, the scenery going by while the track play. This was good. Oh! Big man, cake man. <laughs>